correct? Yeah, okay. I will take it away. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, I guess we're competing with a, uh, you know, four NFL players who are doing interesting things with startups. Uh, you're, uh, you're pretty lucky, though. Um, you get to hear from a former Colorado high school state basketball team. So uh, I'll compete as best I can with that. Uh, what I'd like to talk a little bit about today is the importance of selecting a brand wisely and how it can impact both your bottom line, uh, your ability to fundraise, uh, but also help you avoid uh, making bad mistakes. Uh, choosing a bad brand um, can have a pretty negative impact and I take you through the journey that we went through uh, as a company. So to start off a little bit, uh, I'm with Home Advisor. Um, we are a marketplace for homeowners to find screened and rated service professionals. Everything from maid services to handymen, uh, remodelers, etc. In fact, we have about 500 different services in total. Uh, to give you a sense of our scale, we're the third largest home improvement destination on the web uh, as ranked by unique visitors for home improvement repair and maintenance. Uh, we do a service request every five seconds, which equates to about five to six million service requests a year that are coming through our service. We were founded in 1999 as Wizen.com. Very quickly in 2000, we changed the name to Service Magic. And with a lot of entrepreneurial startups, um, I think what we did was very, very similar. A bunch of us sat around in a room, whiteboarded a bunch of ideas, thought about it for a couple days, and then came back and said, Service Magic it is. And then for the next 12 years, we really focused on putting our head down, building a two-sided marketplace of uh, homeowners cost efficiently, so we got very efficient and effective with SEO and SEM. And then scaling the um, service professional side, so building a network of 85,000 pros uh, that we had, building the sales operations group. And then you know, 12 years later, we took a look and said, hey, uh, what do we need to do to take the business up to the next level to really scale things? And we had always had the suspicion along the way but service management may not be the strongest brand for what we were trying to accomplish. Uh, but we really had a challenge with the SEO. SEM was very effective for us. We were growing very, very quickly. Uh, we started to start asking the question and say, what does service management mean to our homeowner customers? And the feedback we got was kind of as you would expect. Uh, as you look at the brand service management, it doesn't really scream home improvement when you hear it. Uh, and we were going through and a lot of research, focus groups, um, surveys, uh, general feedback, and found that, you know, magic suggests fraud or trickery. Um, you know, things like, I don't understand what you do, it sounds like a cleaning company. We were getting confused with Service Master quite frequently. Uh, and so, you know, as we knew we wanted to invest in building the brand, you know, I was thinking, we're stuck in the money middle, and we're not in a good position to scale through TV, radio, more traditional brand advertising. Um, and what I mean by the money middle is, if you look at the brand continuum, you have really two areas that you can select from. The first is really distinctive and unique, and these are uh, companies that have come up with something that's evocative, something that's creative and interesting, and they build a brand around that and identity around that over time. Generally, um, you're talking about one word, two syllables, you can turn it into a verb very easily, Google it, Dropbox it, things like that. And then you have on the other end of the continuum, the descriptive and unique um, brands. And those are uh, differentiated enough such that you, over time, um, can create the pro uh, appropriate differentiation, trade market. Uh, but it's memorable, and it very quickly tells the uh, consumer what exactly you do. The recall is very high. We didn't need either one of those criteria. We were stuck right in the muddy middle. Uh, so we, needed, we knew we needed to do something. But we also knew that uh, a rebrand and a domain change could be very expensive. So we started researching this out across the web and really didn't find that many companies of our size, you know, at the time we were doing five million leads a month, um, you know, highly profitable business, all driven by SEO and SEM. Uh, and there weren't many examples of companies of our size and scale. We had a million uh, URLs uh, that had engaged in a transition like this. And one example we found was nuts.com. They were nuts online, and they transitioned over to nuts.com. And uh, it was a disaster. They lost 85% of their traffic. 
uh, were non-existent with that in SEO. And so clearly that, that made us pause and question whether or not we had made the right decision for the rebrand. And even our hometown newspaper, when we announced we were doing this, we thought we'd get some good press, we'd get some local you know, guys doing good stuff, uh, let's spread the word. They, they came out with a home advisor, changed the name in a risky branding strategy. Um, so everybody knew this was going to be a highly, highly risky thing. So we ultimately did it. Rebranded from service management to home advisor. And we lived in town. Um, I'm, I'm here today, uh, so we, we were able to successfully pull it off. Uh, what I'd like to do is spend a little bit of time this afternoon going through that journey, the steps we took, uh, hopefully some practical tips and advice um, from the SEO and SEM side. So starting with SEM, uh, there are a few things that I would call your attention to on this. We started the domain cutover in September of 2012, a full three months prior to when we intended to rebrand fully, uh, and, and started migrating uh, our top quality score ad groups and keywords uh, such that we could build domain level history and account level history with very high quality. The other benefit to this was that it was the seasonal downtime for Home Advisor. Q4 is when things were very slow for us, so the risks were very, very low. Um, but by going through and putting those high quality score keywords in place, the high quality score ad groups, we were able to elevate our account level and our domain level quality score with Google. And then we started phasing in the tier two, the tier three, the lower quality stuff. The other really important thing we did is avoid transitioning all the bloat that we had carried with us over the 12 years. So we had had numerous keyword expansions. Everybody's trying to capture the long tail, get more and more and more, get the competitive advantage. And we ended up with a lot of keyword bloat in our accounts. And it was maybe margin neutral to slightly positive, but we were losing uh, a lot from a just overall um, account uh, domain quality score perspective. So we kept those out. The other thing I would really highlight here is that once we got back to Perry, it took us about five months to get back, to rebuild the history with Google, uh, to rebuild the credibility with them. It took us five months. But most importantly, our click-through rate was 15% higher than your home advisor, and our conversion rate was 5% higher. So if we had done that research up front 12 years ago, when we kind of rushed through the cycle, when we were whiteboarding ideas, done a bit more consumer research, we would have been reading the benefits over the last 12 years of the business and having a more competitive domain than search. Um, and it's grown more and more competitive over time, so it becomes extremely important. The other uh, few points that I would highlight, uh, and, what we, and this is kind of what we look at from an SEM best practices perspective and the kind of four buckets uh, that we like to emphasize. The history piece is very important. Uh, transitioning to top tier keywords, I mentioned that. Eliminating the waste. The other thing we did is use it as an opportunity to tighten up our ad groups. So um, we have been using dynamic keyword insertion, have been very generic in our copy. Uh, when we restructured our accounts as we transitioned to the new brand, we were very tight around specific themes and content such that we could differentiate ourselves and avoid keyword insertion as much as possible. Uh, tracking, we assured that we tracked it very closely, everything from click-through rate to overall impression share. I thought it was interesting to look at the differences between max CPC and average CPC. Uh, the spread between those two really collapsed initially indicating that the quality score was low and then, then it expanded and our CPCs actually went down and we're much lower for better position over time because our quality score is really high. Uh, and then we tested like crazy, and I think this is a uh, really valuable lesson that I wish we had done uh, 12 years ago. We actually used search as one of the inputs to uh, the brand decision. So we ran Home Advisor against Service Management against a bunch of other domains to see what had the highest click-through rate, to see what had the highest conversion rate, actually to see what had the, the best repeat usage. And so we were able to learn a lot in a live marketplace, a highly competitive marketplace, around what consumers thought of our brand. Um, on the SEO side, this one was a bit trickier. And this was a big portion of our business. I referenced the challenges of nuts.com. The way we like to think about it is as if you were taking a very dense million page book in our case. We had, we had a million URLs. And the, the practical advice here is if you're going to make that transition, change nothing but the title. 
uh, if you start messing with any of the content inside the book, the user experience, the page layout, the design, uh, you can confuse Google and it also creates a problem with isolating the impact of the domain change with all the other changes that you make. But it's a, it's a really big temptation that people have because when they go through a rebrand, they want to really redesign the user experience, bring new content on, make all these changes and release it. But it, it can be very risky. So the, the best thing to do is change the title, keep all the content, all the pages, all the link structure the same. Once you've reestablished yourself, which for us um, took about eight months to fully recover. Uh, the first two months uh, were very, very painful. We lost about half our traffic from search. But we were confident in the strategy that we had taken and the approach. Uh, so we stuck with it. And a year later, we were 22% better. And I attribute this again back to we were more competitive within the, the search results because our brand meant something to people now. Uh, it actually connected with users who were looking for home improvement. Service magic just was missing, as we saw in that slide. Uh, and so click through rates went up, and we saw a 22% lift in our overall performance within SEO. So again, Wish we had done that research up front. Wish we had known that definitively and chosen wisely because there was a lot of opportunity cost along the way. But ultimately, we made it all the way back. So a few other things to think about with respect to SEO. Um, you know, external factors, uh, this is a pretty straightforward one, but I really think it's important. We've always had a very strong discipline of insourcing a strong SEO team. We have really good uh, people who work very closely with our product and technology team. I don't think it's a function that you should outsource if you can afford not to. And I don't think you can afford uh, to not have it in-house for the most part because it's so critical to your business. Uh, but they really stay on top of what's the competition doing, how's the marketplace changing, uh, but it's a really important competency to have in-house. Uh, content, uh, again, don't make big changes when you're transitioning over to the new domain. One thing that we did after uh, we launched uh, Home Advisor and we got back to parity uh, is introduced the cost guide, which took um, really 10 years of home improvement data that we were getting from our service requests and ratings and reviews. And we were able to tell people how much appliance repair should cost in Denver, Colorado, or how much gutter cleaning should be in Las Vegas. And so the key point there is it was it's proprietary, very um, uh, distinct content that, that's sticky, improved our uh, time on site, and reduced our bounce rate, and Google loves it. Uh, it's been a great, great source for us. Uh, on the link front, um, we have, from the beginning, really focused on strategic partnerships with the authoritative sites in the space uh, where we're authoring content, um, getting our name out there through that, and then obviously getting the links back and the benefit from it. Um, but we have a really strong PR team as well, and we invested heavily in PR during the rebrand. So we actually doubled down and increased even more um, our PR investment to spread the word uh, about Home Advisor and get a lot of positive impact leads. Uh, and then we also, from a tactical perspective, um, identified our top 20% of referring domains. We went out to the site owners and said, hey, will you change this from Service Magic Home Advisor? It seems pretty simple, but what a lot of people do is just 301 redirect them all, and a lot of them, uh, a lot of that value is diluted through the 301 redirect. So identifying that top 20%, um, getting those linked directly back to you. And then, then we started playing with the user experience and reducing, again, bounce rates, uh, improving conversion rates. But that, again, was once we had reached parity with our previous run rates, uh, but invested heavily in improving it. So a few things um, that I would leave you with. Uh, you know, from our experience, a good brand really matters. Um, you know, we found from all the different uh, paid search, organic search pieces that having something that your, your consumers identify with is a real strategic advantage. It improves the click-through rate, improves the conversion rate. Um, and you don't want to get 12 years into your history like we did and realize that, hey, we want to you know, start telling our story through TV, radio, and other brand channels, and realize you don't have a brand that consumers can identify with, and that you're going to have to go through a costly uh, rebrand as we experience. So do the homework up front. 
Um, you can do a lot of cheap things. Uh, you know, there's things like SurveyMonkey, and we, we spent a lot of money on focus groups, and we at the time had the resources. Uh, but just by going out and telling a friend your company's name, doing a quick description of it, uh, explaining the value proposition, and then having them recite the name back to you at the end of that, just make sure it's sticky enough that they can retain it. Have them spell it back to you. Just walk around and, and use your friends and neighbors as a good uh, piece of feedback. And then avoid the money middle. Um, you know, choose either a distinctive name, uh, one of those evocative names, um, that you can ultimately build identity around over time, or something that's that's more descriptive. Um, but make sure it's unique in some way. Um, and uh, that's basically it. I, I put um, some resources up here for you uh, that we use ongoing, and that you can use when when researching domains, making domain selection. Um, you know, one thing that I didn't mention is you know, verifying that the social media uh, handles available as well. Uh, and there's a tool out there that can go across all the different uh, social media networks to identify whether or not that may So, uh, questions? Right. No, it's, it's a really good question. We, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, could we have a, a flanker brand, a, a you know, two brand um, type strategy? But we decided that it made more sense to really take all of the, all of our efforts, all of our inbound link equity, all of our SEM, um, and focus it on that specifically versus trying to support two. Because it just becomes, you become too diluted over time. Um, you know, service magic now three or one reader. It still gets a lot of traffic. You know, there's a lot because we're on the web for 12 years, um, so we still get a lot of value out of service magic. But we end up you know, really focusing on. Like, for example, like, It's a really good question, and that's the reason we did the rebrand. Really, is to reduce our reliance on Google. Uh, you know, 70, 80 percent of our traffic was coming from search in some way. Uh, now we're spending aggressively on TV, spending aggressively on radio, and so we've diversified our marketing channels. So we're less reliant on the search engines that we were previously. Um, and so that if an update were to occur, or as the search marketplace continues to get more competitive as it is every day, um, that we are. Diversified in our acquisition channels. I think it's a safe, it's a safe thing. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah? Uh, when you uh, rebate the search for the budget, um, did you guys do the search for purchase the domain? Uh, was that the difference in half domain? No, well, we were in the process of, so we, we bought the domain from Microsoft. It was their real estate channel uh, for a long time. And they had built a lot of the as a real estate portal of destination. Um, but, you know, we knew that it had instinctively, um, you know, it was better for our category. But we went out and did a lot of consumer surveys where we had other brands that we had purchased that we had on the shelf that we acquired early on, like Home Connections and ProofNet. Um, and and really did all the research on that as well before we made the switch. But we also tested all those within search too to see what clicked best, to see what converted best as another input. Um, but then had the, the hands-on focus groups as well, sent a lot of surveys with you know five or six different domains. And Home Advisor was jumped way to the top. You know, it was thirty-five percent of consumers preferred it to like six percent for service management. <laughs> it, was, it was slightly opportunistic. We knew that we wanted to rebrand and we knew that we needed to rebrand um, to, to uh, grow by traditional media. 
uh, and then uh, we learned about the opportunity to pick it up. And so we knew that it would be a good one to have as potentially a flanker brand as something to have in the portfolio. Um, but we didn't know it was going to ultimately be the end all uh, domain that we would go with. So we looked at a lot of different ones. It was one that we had on the shelf, if you will. Yeah? What kind of impact did it have that Mark uh, I think for the most part it was a, a slight benefit. Um, you know, there was still a lot of link equity that set out there, um, and um, we benefited from it some. I think there was a little bit of brand confusion initially because they had invested a fair amount, and it does sound a little bit like a real estate destination. So we were fighting that, but you, know, you run enough TV and, and get the word out about who we are, it very quickly changed. So I, I don't think it was a big benefit or deficit, um, but that's one thing to certainly do. I mean. A lot of these domains have very ugly pasts and, and really uh, scary history. So before you go out and buy one, make sure you look at the history of that domain, how it was used previously. A lot of domains will have penalties with Google uh, already if you purchase it, you're already going to make this issue. So we did that research. Yeah? Uh, what, what tools do we use? I guess, I, I guess I didn't put them all up. I didn't actually pared that list down. Um, so, you know, the, the first thing we looked at is just to make sure that there were no significant penalties against it. And then we were looking at, uh, I think 40 labs and a few of these up here have some good resources for identifying what the domain level history and, and you know, link equity might be. Uh, but I can send some of those to you if you want. Uh, I can put up there. Thank you.